Hi there. Um, my name is Michael Braun, aka Jurassic Prince. Um, today we have a very special guest. I'm going to interview Whit Hertford, who play Volunteer Boy in Jurassic Park. Uh, this is my first video for my channel. Uh, it's gonna be a great one. I can't wait. Let's check him out. How are you, um, Whit? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good, man. Yeah, I was trying. I was trying to drink my coffee correctly, and then I realized I was drinking it like Trump with like two hands. <laughs> well, you know, I got some questions to ask you about your time working on, you know, Jurassic Park, which is, you know, the best movie ever made. <laughs> yeah. Um, how were you able to get this opportunity to work on this film? Uh, <clears throat> it's not all that crazy of a story. I mean, I auditioned. My mom had read the books. She had read the Michael Crichton books. And so when it was announced and that it was a new Spielberg movie and that I had gotten an audition for it, um, somehow, I don't, I mean, I guess I was working a lot. So my agent was doing a really good job. I don't know, but somehow I got in there and my mom, I think, because in the book, the boy and the girl are swapped ages, right? So the boy is older, which would have been more, would have been closer to my age. And so she thought I was going in for like, the, the kid and uh, and so when we went in um there was no sides or or any script to read um uh, they just the casting director basically sat me in front of the camera and said um okay, i'm gonna read you a story and I, I want you to be afraid of it and, and to act afraid and i didn't know what kind of story it was going to be but it was a story about dinosaurs and she just wanted me to be afraid. So it was all reactionary. The audition was like no dialogue at all. It was just my, my face, oh. uh, which is, <clears throat> I guess how I got it. Apparently as folklore goes, they um, sent the, the tapes personally to Spielberg and he, he handpicked my weird face. So yeah. And what was, what was it like working with, you know, Sam Neill, Laura Dern and the legendary filmmaker Steven Spielberg. So it was great. It was only two days. It was in the Mojave Desert. It was 125 degrees. I do remember that. Oh wow! And yeah, it was brutal. I I literally hadn't been in any weather that hot in my life, and so it was brutal. And I was kind of like a chubby kid, so I was like um, sweating. <laughs> right. And and. Uh, so I just remember um, Sam was great. Sam was really, I mean, he was a little intimidating. Sam's kind of intense and intimidating, at mm -hmm. least when I met him. I don't, I don't know him that well. Um, and Laura, I remember a fun thing was that they were shuttling us from the trailers to the set, which was really like half a mile. I mean, we could have walked it, but it was 125 degrees. And... I was listening to my, my disc band, to my headphones, because I was a you know, total like, angsty preteen. And I was listening to this band. She goes, what are you, what are you listening to? And I go, oh, it's, oh it's, this, it's this band out of Seattle called Pearl Jam, which oh. is like, dates how old this movie is now. Yeah. Right? It's, like, it's like, wow, shit, man. That, that, that was when Pearl Jam was huge and now they're been around for a million years so that was kind of fun she had she had never heard of it and i thought you know i always remember that moment um spielberg was great spielberg uh what i remember was that he just very, I, I was very surprised of how normal he was and how down to earth and it put it puts you at ease like like really quickly and so even me who you know was there for two days, had a very small role. He makes you feel like very valued and that you're an actor. And he had us, he had me improv a couple different things that didn't make the final cut, which are always kind of like cool little folklore stories. But yeah, so he was great. We can get to that. Awesome. I mean, I can tell that he's good with the kids. I mean, he's always had like uh, some kind of gift yeah. in, you know, communicating with kids on set. Um, yeah. So you said that there's like a there's more 
to your scene that never made it to the final cut, right? Yeah. So there was a the main uh, part that I remember that that didn't make it, which is too bad because it would have been cool, is that it's um, it's before the whole six foot turkey line and. They, he had me, Spielberg had me um, walk across one of the fossils, like stomp, like kind of stomp on it. Really? He told me, yeah, he's like, I want you to walk across the fossil to be like a brat. And, uh, and, and then Sam's going to yell at you. And then I want you to walk past camera and under your breath. I want you to say asshole. And uh, <laughs> this is great. This is great because my, my stepdad was the one that came with me on set. And I was really bummed out about that. I wanted my, I was closer to my mom. I, I didn't really like my stepdad that much. He was kind of a weird dude. Um, mm. But somehow he convinced my mom to let him be my, my guardian for that shoot, right? Because I was only like 13. And, and so like the fact that Steven Spielberg was telling me to do something like kind of, kind of naughty, like yeah. swear on camera was like really, really cool. You know what I mean? It was really cool. Yeah. He's but like, it never, it never made it. Oh man. I would love to see that. Even if it's just a yeah. delayed scene in like one of those DVD, you know, bonus features, yeah. I would love to see that. Well, uh, I bet it's not in there because it's not because of the swear words. Yeah. Um, you know, because isn't is Jurassic R or is it the speech of 13? That's what you know what I mean. So, like, it, sh- it should be fine. It's back in the 80s when Spielberg produced the Goonies. You know, there was yeah. some swear oh, yeah. in the Goonies, and and even in ET oh. when he directed ET, there was a, a bit of swearing, maybe like Dame and I think shit, and that's it really. But okay, okay, but that's interesting. I did not know that. I think nobody knew that. I think. I think we've learned something new today for sure yeah, yeah yeah i mean i'm the only one that knows that story really i mean i don't even think steven spielberg would remember that but yeah. your scene though is very important because it's foreshadowing uh the clubic earl scene you know Muldoon's death but it's a really iconic scene it's really intense uh which speaking of do you um do you recognize this thing? <laughs> that's good dude that's really yeah. good. Where'd you get that? I, I think I got <laughs> it. I got this at a um, a convention called uh, MegaCon, which is in in Orlando. I used to live in, in Orlando, and okay. it was the same day I believe that I met Jeff Goldblum. You know, I took a picture with him. He signed uh, my poster, cool. so it was pretty cool. Yeah. But yeah. like, but I used this to um, cut my six foot turkey for Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good. <laughs> I have a um, question for you about this, you know, fan theory, and I think you've probably heard about it. But um, oh yeah, 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 it's about um, your character turns out to be, you know, Chris Pratt's character Owen in Jurassic World because um, Sam Neill, you know, tells you to show a little bit of respect, right? And and, and then in you know in in the world, Chris Pratt tells you know Bryce Dallas Howard about you know. I don't control the Raptors. It's um, it's the relationship. It's based on mutual respect. And he said respect. It kind of goes back to when Sam Neil tells you to respect the Raptors. I guess I'm like, sure, <laughs> interesting. Sure. I never heard of that theory before. That's what do you, what do you what's your take on that? <laughs> I mean, I can see people connecting the dots, and like, if somebody like Spielberg was to say, yeah, that was true. Because really, it's kind of up to him. He's right. the, he's he's the one that holds the keys to the kingdom, you know. Yeah. Um, and then I then I go cool. But since nobody official, you know, even Colin Trevorrow can't really make the call on that. Mm-hmm. Um, but fans are really interesting because they were very adamant about that, and um, and I responded to it on Twitter. I don't know if you saw that. I think I did see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, cause, um, I just thought it would be f- funny <laughs> to, to like, 
not be so willing to give in to that kind of thing, you know, like I think uh, as as an actor, you you take sort of like a certain amount of pride in what you do, even if it's like a dumb commercial or if you're a kid when you do it. Mm-hmm. And because this movie, I mean, I'm 41 now, man, and we're talking about it, you know? So it's like wow. my whole life, no matter what I do, <laughs> until I eclipse this movie, which is like one of the biggest movies of, you know, the last 30 years, then, then I'm, I'm kind of always going to be that, that character. And so I also think, I mean, look, man, look at this face, you know, like this face does not turn into Chris Pratt That's at true. all. Like Chris Pratt is, is a, a really handsome looking dude and I'm a weird looking dude. Nah, man, <laughs> you better look at me. Come on. Whatever. We, I mean, we got the, we got the memo on the beard. So that's good. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so no, I mean, like, I, I kind of think probably this is my ego speaking, but I think it'd be really fun. You know, they've now done several Jurassic worlds. I mean, I, I think it'd be kind of fun to have that character pop in. Yes. Your in character. A way, yeah. In a way that made sense. I mean, right. There's no reason that, uh, I just think I just think it's too cute to make the Chris Pratt character that character. Do you know what I mean? I just think right. it's a little too cute. That's true. I mean, I think Chris Pratt plus, did say once. Plus, bad kids rarely become reformed, like good guys. So, right. so if that character was a punk, he's gonna still be a punk, and I, I would like to play a villain. I like that. So, you know, let it, let everybody know. I think we should, we should make it where it's a thing where like my character should be an antagonist, right? Yeah. I mean, maybe you could work for Dodson. If you heard about that, um, the character Dodson is coming back in the upcoming uh, Jurassic World movie. Is that the Wayne Knight character? Um, he's the guy that wants him to steal the embryos off the island. He's in that little cafe scene only, right? Yeah. But it's not okay. the same actor though. Um, Interesting. But Chris Pratt did say once that a lot of people from the original movies are coming back. I'm like, they might as well bring you back too. I would like to see. Maybe you should. You know, there was a missed opportunity, really. I don't think Chris had gotten this movie yet. I think he was maybe just had done Guardians. And I saw him at 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 this restaurant in LA, kind of like this takeout restaurant. And I went up to him and I talked to him because... uh, why did I talk? There was something, oh, we have a mutual friend. Um, and so I kind of went over there just to introduce myself. And he was very nice. He was very, very cool. But it's too bad that the timing was off because that would have been the perfect time to go like, you know, hey, let's figure out a way to make this work. I mean, the thing is, is that like, and this is going to sound totally arrogant, but what a lot of people don't know is that after all of Jurassic and everything. I mean, like I did Jurassic and I did another movie with Karen Culkin, a couple other little things, but basically I pulled the plug um, after that. Uh, meaning like I, I just, my mom said, do you wanna, uh, you know, I was at that point now 14, 15. She's like, do you wanna, she could tell that when I would get an audition, I'd be right. bummed out. Right. I, I wanted to go to high school. I wanted to play basketball and make out with girls, and, you know, be a normal kid. Right. And, and so I, I just basically kind of stopped acting for like the last little bit of high school. Whereas everybody else that I had been auditioning with at that point, Seth Green, Giovanni Rubisi, Elijah Wood, Tobey Maguire, all these guys, that was the, the dudes that I would be auditioning with all the time. And I left, I went to college, I got mm-hmm. married. But what a lot of people don't know is that like, I went and I, I have two degrees. I studied classical acting after that because I, I kind of got disenchanted with acting and then something 
basically I was just like going to college with my best friend. And then I kind of peeked around the theater department there and it was like nationally ranked and kind of, kind of a, a great program uh, in, in the mountains of Utah actually. And, um, and so that's where I learned like about Shakespeare and that's where I learned how to, you know, fall in love with, with things like Chekhov and Arthur Miller and, and these playwrights. And I really rediscovered what acting was. Cause when I was a kid, I had a cool hobby as an actor, but I don't think I knew what acting was. I took it seriously. I was never like a, like, um, a goofball. And I always tried to be like a nice, uh, kid. I was never like a entitled kid actor. My mom would never let us be that way. Like she kept us in, public school and she kept us pretty grounded right me and my right. sisters because they acted as well and so that was that was good and and it kept me sort of grateful to to be able to, to have a cool hobby you know no matter what kind of ridicule i'd get it at school you, you'd think that that people would just think that you're like the shit but they don't kids are mean and so right. like if you're if you're a kid actor that threatens them and 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 so then they're they're mean man they they they'll be mean kids and um so yeah so after high school and all that stuff i went and i i did that and then about 10 12 years later i went to london and and got my degree in, in theater directing and so i've been doing a lot of like really um like deep work Okay. As, a, as as a actor, as a theater maker, um, uh, and as a playwright, and so that like those things are my loves, and it's not like I was, you know, I guess the point that I'm getting to is that like I'm ready, I'm ready for that kind of role because I've been preparing for years, right, to to still be relevant, you know, and so sometimes it's like to have the kid actor like stigma is like, I'm grateful for it. Cause I like talking to fans like a lot, Absolutely. but I also think that there's this thing where like the internet world is really tough to convince that you're not what their initial and sort of tattooed image of you is. Does that make sense? Sort of. I, I think it makes so. Sense. Like, I can be like sixty, and I'll be still be the Jurassic Park kid unless I do something that eclipses that. Right. Which is fine, but like, I I would like to teach. I would like to be a published playwright, and these are things that like, you know, I I hope will happen, and uh, so yeah. So in, I guess long story made kind of short <laughs> is that like, um. I'm not just some kid that was in a movie that now would like to revisit his role because it's like the only thing that he's ever done in his life. You know, it's like oh yeah, no. I mean, no, I've seen what uh, a, night a nightmare on Elm Street five and Poltergeist two, and I know you've done some voice acting as well, right? You've done yeah. uh, what yeah. Star Wars: The Clone Wars, you know, which I love Star Wars. That's like my second favorite, you know, franchise for sure. Yeah, but um. No, yeah, I mean, I like Star Wars and Nightmare on Elm Street is pretty good. And, you know, Poultry Guys, though, it's pretty, you know, some pretty scary shit, you know. <laughs> but I mean, again, you know, like I, I totally know what sort of face I have. And this is right. not a face that gives you like r roses and daffodils. This is mm -hmm. a face that gives you nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But yeah. Um, <laughs> So but, like, yeah, you know, no Clone Wars is great. Clone Wars is one of the cooler things. I'm re like, that's still sort of like a mind blower that I got to do that. Cause I mean, I, I worked right with Dave Filoni who's oh. all behind the Mandalorian. He's a genius. And um, yeah, you know, like they had me do a British accent which I hadn't lived in London at that point. And so my British accent was really bad, like really bad. And it can't be as bad as what's his face, um, Van Dyke. Dick Van Dyke, yeah. Dick yeah. Van Dyke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, so like, 
I just kind of went, I just went for it. And I remember actually when we were, sh when we were, this is about a total other project, but um, I hope that's okay. But when we were recording Clone Wars, uh, I think it was one of the later episodes because I only did a handful of episodes. Um, the guy that does Yoda wasn't there. It wasn't, was freak, in. it wasn't freak Oz. No, 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 it was, no, no. The guy does the voice of a different guy. Gotcha. Um, at least for the Clone Wars show it was. And so Dave was like, does anybody know how to like imitate a Yoda thing so that while we're reading it, somebody can read those lines? And I was like, let's do it. And so that was really fun that I just kind of got to goof around a little bit. But yeah, it's a, every time I hear Clone Wars, I'm like, oh man, my vowels are off. It's not the accent. It's really bad. Cause when I lived in London, um, I did this thing where like, I realized really quickly that if I wanted to be able to get like a theater space to be able to put on like a play for a weekend or whatever, mm -hmm. that if I rang up an artistic director or a manager director, somebody that owns a, a building or a space and just was like, hi, and talked to my voice, they right. probably wouldn't respect me. But if I called them up and I say, oh, hey, mate, how are you doing? Do you have anything on Friday or Saturday? It'd be lovely if you could, you know, Common day, I'm just trying to do like a short run of this one play. Right. They, they immediately give you credibility. So I kind of faked an accent all the time, which, uh, which after a while, my partner at that time, she was like, dude, you're starting to sound like Madonna. You got to cut it out. <laughs> Madonna. <laughs> Back to um, Jurassic Park, when, tell me, the first time you saw the movie i went to a screening at uh city walk and it was it was mainly a crew screening um which is still cool i mean it was it was big and we got a program it was very fancy it wasn't like a red carpet or whatever that was i think they did that in new york um or probably a couple places but anyway i was low on the totem pole so i went to the crew screening and uh it's wild, man. It's wild to see your face that big. And right. it's like, you know, they're just like, he's keeping on me. The camera's keeping on me for that reaction for a long time. And um, that was wild. And then I would have, you know, talking about kids that I would go to school with, there was some like fun stuff where they then, I remember a group of us, or maybe it was like around my birthday. Do you know, you, I mean, you know all the facts and figures. What day was it, was, what month was it released in? Uh, it was released on June 11th, 1993. June 11th, interesting, okay. That wasn't a test, by the way, that's very impressive. Um, my birthday's in November, so I'm trying to think, maybe it was just like a thing, but whatever the case. My, um, like a group of school friends, 14, I guess I'm in high school at that point. I'm not in middle school. I kind of forget, I don't remember. Well, I think I was in high school. So I think a bunch of my high school friends, uh, maybe like 15, something like that. Like a, a big group, 20. Right. We went to uh, we went to some theater. I can't remember if it was in where I grew up or in LA. Cause I grew up in a suburb outside of LA. Um, and anyway, and it was just fun. And like all my friends cheered. And at one point they'd like stand up and they'd like point to the whole audience in the theater. Like he's right, like very disruptive. That's, like very not, not cool. I'm sure <laughs> everybody else in the theater was like, who cares? Yeah, um, that was cute. <laughs> but, and then, you know, and I've done that a couple of times since. So like uh, my buddy's a very, like he's a close friend of mine, but he's also like a very big fan. Mm -hmm. And he's very, he's very cute about it. Like he, he will only geek out like once in a while, but when they did the, was it the 3D version or was there another release before that? I can't remember. There was another release and he said, hey, if I do a big, uh, like if I, if I buy the theater out, will you come and sign autographs afterwards? I was like, yeah, of course. And then when I lived in Salt Lake, they did like a midnight showing at this really cool place in Salt Lake called Brewies, where you can like eat dinner and drink beer while you're watching movies. It's an awesome place. Ooh. 
yeah it's cool um and they did they did a screening and so they had me do like a q a at the beginning and i kind of introduced the movie it was pretty funny though i was sitting in the <laughs> i was sitting in the audience and uh and the guy you know that that i don't think he owns the theater but he was like a manager or whatever he's like all right so we're gonna we're about to start and before we start the movie we have one of the actors here a uh, special guest and I'm in the audience right mm -hmm. and so like people next to me and behind me I'm like whispering right? right and I hear one guy going Goldblum Goldblum I'm like oh man they're gonna be so disappointed when it's not Jeff Goldblum oh come on <laughs> I mean you can't get you can't get your hopes up all the time now but it was fun I gave him some you know I gave him some anecdotes like I'm giving you and it's fun it's fun to do that kind of stuff. I, I used to be embarrassed of it, Mike. I used to sort of like, again, you know, you're seeing my like most prepubescent image mm -hmm. immortalized where like I've developed man boobs and I like have baby fat still. And like, there's, there's a lot of elements of 14 year old wit that are like very cringy. <laughs> uh, and so like there, there was a large time between like 15 to in my mid twenties where I kind of tried everything to not be that guy. I tried every, you know, I would like lose a shit ton of weight. I would like make my look look very different. I would, there were a lot of things that I tried to separate myself from, but you know, probably, probably around my mid thirties. I just was like, it's so great. You know, it could have been like Ernest Saves Christmas could have been the movie I was in and that'd be not that cool. So like, you know, it's much better that it's this, this seminal classic. That's a, that, you know, and so I'm, I'm uh, like really honored and grateful and stuff like that. Absolutely. Well, that's pretty cool how you got to, you know, watch the movie for the first time with your friends. So that's that's a pretty good, cute story when they point out out your your scene and oh, that's him. That's him. I like that. <laughs> you know, and it's so funny. Like kids are like, even though when I was younger, when I did like '90s sitcoms and Nightmare and stuff like that, I was like ten. Um, the kids, you know, you get you get bullied a little bit and teased, but with Jurassic, actually. People were really cool. Like kids at school were really cool about it, and it was really funny that you went from sort of like one, you know, you got a certain amount of attention, and then the day it comes out, you're treated totally different. Meaning yeah. that like all of a sudden I was much cooler, and I, I always thought that was weird. I thought that that was really weird because I was like, I'm exactly the same. I didn't change at all, you know. Right. And so I got really like philosophical about being a kid actor and being like, yeah, I never, I never really understood how we, we become such strange people when it comes to celebrity, you know? Exactly. That's why like for me to do this with you, man, it's like, of course I'm going to do this because it's an opportunity for you to like see that I am a normal guy. Absolutely. You know? Oh yeah. And I, I got trash back there and I got, you know, leftover food from midnight snacking, you know? Really? Yeah, well, no, I know Just I didn't like, clean up. I'm so rude. I, I, well, that's, that's so normal. I, I didn't think you would oh. do that. But, I mean, if I were to get starstruck with someone, it would have to be Spielberg, though. I mean, that's yeah. the one guy I, I just have to meet. But I was know. that way, too, man. And, I, I mean, if I were to see him again, I would definitely be starstruck again. Just because I've had so many since I was – 14 years old I've played in my mind so many things that I would say to him again if I saw me because the, the last day of shooting he whispered to me I'm gonna use you again and I've never forgot that and so like when Hook came out I was like was that supposed to be me when AI came out I was like is that supposed to be me so I've like since then always been like hey man I'm not getting any younger and neither are you. So what is this? I'm going to use you again. Bullshit. Let's do it. 
if he's watching this, then he might as well, you know, do it. Yeah. Come on, come on, Steven. If you're watching yeah, this, but, let's make some right. fun together. I, I would direct and you produce, uh-huh. Steven. What's your favorite, you know, Jurassic Park um, sequel, if, if you have one? Well, here's the thing. I don't know the second one that well, because I remember watching it only once. And I'm a big William H. Macy fan. So even though the third one maybe has some like, not everybody's favorite, like I love William. I can watch William H. Macy read the phone book. I, I, I met him one time and ate dinner with him one time. And he's just like, he's one of my favorite actors ever. Um, so I would probably be partial to say that, you know, I like the first three because you're not, de- you're dealing with more practical stuff, right? And the Jurassic World stuff, they're just so heavily computer generated. Mm-hmm. CGI. Yeah, and I'm just not like, I'm still old school, man. I love the Muppets. I right. love anything that in the Star Wars world where it was about models and things like that. I'm, I, I'm like an old man about it. I kind of, I kind of don't want to uh, totally give over everything to i mean because in the mandalorian right like let's talk about that real quick in the mandalorian you see all this practical stuff and it makes it so much better right i mean exactly i'm I'm like i'm like the same way i think um i love jurassic world no doubt it's a great sequel but what's so special about the first film is that there are um, tons of like scenes with just the animatronics you know the t-rex and the raptors even the dilophosaurus you also had the CGI as well, but even with the CGI back in, you know, 1993, it seemed more real than the CGI in, in Jurassic World for just for some reason. It just, yeah. dinosaurs look better in the, in the first film. And that's why, I mean, I love Jurassic World. I love all the movies. I mean, but the first one will, will always be the best one in the franchise for sure. Got any Jurassic Park merchandise? Anything? Do you have like um, boys, shirts, pictures? So I had a poster that, that I had Steve then sign. Ooh. Um, and it just became, it was framed and everything. And I've moved around so much, you know, I've moved internationally and whatever, that it just like became such a hassle to have like a storage just for like, you know, frame posters or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so I boiled it down. I ha- now I think it's somewhere. It might be in my closet. I have his signature, the part of the poster, but it's just like a segment of it. Sort of mm-hmm. looks like a, like a treasure map. It's kind of cool that way. Right. Yeah, he, uh, it's funny. He wrote Dear Wit, something like, remember Raptor's attack from two flanks, right? which is what Sam says to me. Right. Um, but he, he like screws up. I think he, I think he writes, there's like a mistake and he's writing in like a silver Sharpie. Right. And so there's, it's great. Cause it's like, it's just so authentic. Cause he like screwed up and had to cross it out and then mm-hmm. rewrote something else. Okay. Cool. Yeah. It's very cool. That's pretty cool. That's the only thing I have. I mean, I wish I had the claw. I don't know who has it. Do you know who has the real claw? It's probably, uh, I think it's Universal in Hollywood. Um, I think uh, sure. three years ago, they did, they did like a 25th anniversary celebration. And they took they put the, some props out, you know, in display to look at. It was either the one in the first movie or in the third movie. I'm not entirely sure. That'd be cool. There's a company... Um, Oh, I'm going to get it wrong, man. I don't want to say it because I don't want to. But there's a, a pin company mm-hmm. in L.A. And they have a bunch of Jurassic Park uh, themed pins like Sam Jackson's arm. And um, right, they had a claw, like a little claw. And so I wrote them and I was like, hey, that's cool. And so they sent me like a big gift bag where they had a little one and then they had a big, I have a bigger claw pin too. I don't know when I'll ever wear it, but like, yeah, the, I, I would, I would consider that sort of memorabilia just cause it's, you know, it's so specific. Absolutely. That's pretty cool. And I think you were telling me, you know, sometime earlier uh, before the interview that 
Um, okay, so in the movie, you were credited as Volunteer Boy, but in yeah. the contract, it was something else you said. Yeah, I vaguely remember, and I don't think this is psychosomatic. I don't think I made this up. I vaguely remember that I was in my trailer at the end of the second day, and I'm signing the contract, and it, it says performer, and then it'll usually give your character name in quotes in the contract. Mm-hmm. And it said Eddie. It didn't say Volunteer Boy. And I remember that very pretty clearly. So not vaguely. I remember that pretty clearly. So I think that's what he was originally called. And then, uh, and then it changed, you know, but it's fun. Like people will, there was like a art, uh, some sort of art act exposition several years ago, like eight or nine years ago in Pasadena where a bunch of really cool, like independent artists did paintings and uh, of Jurassic Park it was a Jurassic Park themed art uh, art exposition and installation and the guy that did mine or the the person that did mine is a friend of mine and I had taken me and, and this person I was dating at the time we went to to go check it out at the opening and and my girlfriend at the time she was like I'm gonna I'm gonna try and buy it, bid on it. I was like, oh, cool. And we, it had already been snatched up. It was, uh, mm. it had already been snatched up. So some guy has some painting of, of me, um, uh, which, is, which is cool that it went, it went really quick. It's a great painting by my friend, uh, Julia Vickerman. She used to work on Yo Gabba Gabba and a couple other shows. She's a cool chick. My, uh, one, my, my partner that uh, <clears throat> I lived with in London, she tried to find the actual shirt, like that that shirt I'm wearing, that striped right. shirt, on like eBay or whatever. Like it's you know it's some it's probably like some Billy Billabong or Rip Curl type surf shirt, but you know it's fun when people try to kind of dig around and find little memorabilia stuff like that. They're pretty expensive now. If you want to find like a Great condition, you know, dress park T Rex toy. It's like between like three hundred to four hundred bucks in the box, uh, brand new. Wow. So like, I think for Jurassic Park, it was like Star Wars. You know, it was like, it was like yeah. the Star Wars of the nineties, basically. Well, and the reason for that is that nobody had seen any sort of effects like that to make right. dinosaurs look real. I mean, the the only thing that predates that were like Godzilla type stuff, right? So like, yeah. So it was a it was a big sort of achievement and, and an, an ambitious movie that um, you know and with all the storm stuff that happened in Hawaii and all of the things that made that movie pretty difficult to get done it's 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 impressive that it has become so iconic. Great man, that's great. Well, that's it, everyone. Uh, we have um, Whit Herford, um, also known as um, Volunteer Boy or the Six Foot Turkey Kid in Jurassic Park. Thank you so much for you know having this amazing interview. There's some new new things I've learned about this movie. Thank you. Cool. I really, really, yeah, I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, man. Even the word raptor means bird of prey. That doesn't look very scary. More like a six foot turkey. So, you know, try to show a little respect. Okay.